Welcome to another informative episode of the AWS Cloud Practitioner Exam Question Series on Exam Tricks and Tips channel. Please like, share, and subscribe to get regular updates on new episode releases. Let's get started. Welcome to episode 12. I'll be covering questions 71 to 75 in this episode. Question number 71 A company wants to protect its AWS cloud information system and assets while performing risk assessment and mitigation tasks. Which pillar of AWS well architected framework is supported by these goals? Please read the question, try to mark your keywords, and also try to find the answer. So, here is my version of the markups it's basically a risk assessment and mitigation task. Now let's go through each options one by one. So the first one, reliability. Now this focuses on ensuring applications or systems are available and resilient to outages. So this particular filler is all about if your application goes down, how it will come back. Do you have resiliency? Do you have redundancy? Is it a, uh, you know, deployed across multiple ages, multiple regions? So that's aspect. This is not what is being asked. Uh, so we have been asked risk assessment and mitigation tasks. So that's not correct. Let's uh, so let's eliminate that. That's gone. Anything else that we can eliminate? Uh, performance efficiency option D. Performance efficiency is about when you run your application, is it optimizing the resource utilization and the cost without compromising the functionality? Now that's not what uh, this particular question is asking. We are talking looking at what is the pillar related to risk assessment and mitigation of the tasks. So this one is also gone. Uh, next one. Option C, operational excellence. Now this one is for prioritizing streamlined processes for managing and operating workloads. So this is around, uh, is your workload running at optimum level? And this is not about risk mitigation uh, and risk assessment. So this is also wrong. And we are left with one option. That's option B, security. Now this is the answer. Security is the pillar of AWS well-architected framework that is supported by the goal of protecting companies, AWS, cloud information systems and assets while performing risk assessment and mitigation tasks. And answer for this question is option B, security. Let's look at some documentation. So this is your reference documentation. Now this is just a summary, but you using this link, you can deep dive uh, in various uh, pillar. And if you particularly look at the security pillar, it focuses on protecting information and systems. And this is where the risk mitigation and risk assessment comes into picture. So that's it uh, on this particular question. Let's move to the next question. Question number 72, what is the purpose of having an internet gateway within a VPC? Please read the question, go through the option, try to find the answer. Here's my version of the markup. What we need to do here is we need to find the purpose of internet gateway within a VPC. No, this is another new topic. This is about networking. Uh, there's one uh, thing I wanted to actually mention. Uh, I'm not going by topic by topic because AWS Cloud Practitioner is a very simple exam. So if I say, okay, in this episode, I'm going to cover all the questions around AWS organizations, then it becomes very obvious that all the answers from that particular section will be related to AWS organization or a related service. So at least in the context of CCP, uh, it's not worth categorizing the ex practice exams or the discussion about the questions by topic because it's all the questions are about a single service. And if you categorize the topics, then you you know that you know it's it's going to be a, the service that's related to that topic. So hence, I'm staying away from categorizing any of these episodes by a particular topic area. When I'll move to Solution Architect Associate, uh, which I'll be launching soon, uh, then we will move to a more topic by topic discussion of the questions because over there it's not going to be a single service and select a single option it will be a combination of service so it's not going to be easy for you to guess it even when uh, we are doing by topics and it does make sense at that point when we get to that level of exam professional as well as associate or speciality where you classify the episodes topic by topic because it makes it then easier to revise so that's it on that uh, let's uh, try to find the answer for this I hope you read the question. Here's the markup. So we would like to know the purpose of having an internet gateway within a VPC. Let's uh, go by elimination technique. The first one is to create a VPN connection to the VPC. Now for VPN connections, a virtual private gateway is used. You do not need an internet gateway. So this one is wrong. Then option C, that's also wrong. To impose bandwidth constraints on internet traffic, it's not used for creating VPN connections, imposing bandwidth constraints or 
load balancing traffic. Internet gateway is not used for any of these three purposes. So this one is also gone. And for load balancing uh, from the internet across EC2 instances, you use elastic load balancer. You don't use uh, an internet gateway for load balancing. So option D is also wrong. That leaves option B to allow communication between VPC and internet. And that's the correct answer. So option B is your correct answer for this particular question. And for this particular use case, we do have a reference documentation from AWS. You can check uh, that this whole article is all about connecting to internet using an internet gateway. So that's it on this particular question. Uh, all of these networking related topics are pretty tough but on this particular question. Let's move to the next question. Question number 73, what do we have here? A company is running a monolithic on-premises application that does not scale and is difficult to maintain. The company has a plan to migrate the application to AWS and divide the application into microservices. So which best practice of AWS well architected framework is the company following with this plan? Please read the question, go through the options and try to find the correct answer. I hope uh, you read the question. So number of keywords here, uh, monolithic application, it's on on premises. that's the biggest keyword. And because it's monolithic, it's not uh, easy to scale it, maintain it because you have a single piece of code, which means that if you need high performance, you need to have a server which will vertically scale. You cannot divide this application into smaller chunks and deploy across different servers. Company wants to migrate, but before migration, they would like to convert this application to microservices. So that's your second keyword. So which particular uh, practice of well architected framework is company following? So let's go one by one. Uh, we'll do this by elimination technique. Uh, it's a simple answer, but uh, assuming you haven't gone through this before or not read through well architected framework, uh, it's better to do by elimination technique. All right. So the first one, option A, says integrate functional testing as part of AWS deployment. Now, functional testing means your application will be foolproof from a functional perspective, uh, but this is nothing to do with microservices or the problem that has been given here, which is the application is monolithic and then converted to microservices. Uh, this aligns to more around operational excellence plan where you are trying to build an application which will be performant and will work as per the functional spec, but not in line with what has been defined in the question. So we rule that option out. Option A is not correct answer. Option B, use automation to deploy changes. This also aligns with uh, operation excellence, uh, but focuses on more efficiency and reliability across deployment, not directly on microservice architecture. So this is not correct. When you use automation to deploy changes, you're making sure that uh, it's bec it becomes efficient, it's a repeatable process, and there are no errors that could be caused uh, due to my manual uh, deployment, et cetera. Again, this is not a correct answer. It's focusing on uh, something else in terms of uh, well-architected framework, not uh, doesn't relate to monolithic to microservices uh, conversion. So that's option B ruled out. Option C, deploy the application to multiple locations. Now, if you do this, you are having a monolithic application. If you are deploying it multiple location, again, you're getting better performance uh, and to some extent, maybe reliability because uh, you are protecting the application against failure. But this is not, uh, there is no architecture element involved here uh, in terms of uh, moving a monolithic architecture to microservices. So we ruled this out as well. And that's that's three options ruled out. Uh, so we are left with uh, option D. Now implement loosely coupled dependencies. Now, once you see the word monolithic app to moving it to cloud and we are using some well-architected framework, this is the answer that uh, instead of having a single monolithic application which cannot scale, you would divide this into microservices, smaller chunks using uh, your architecture principles. And once you do that, then you, you're making the application loosely coupled. It's not tightly coupled, it's loosely coupled and you will get advantages. Like you can then deploy each component of the application on different servers and that will give you better resiliency, better scalability, better maintainability. You can have, now that you've converted your monolithic application code into loosely coupled, even from a development perspective, now you're not having you know developers fighting to work on a piece of code. You have distributed the code as well. So even that aspect uh, from a maintainability uh, works very well. So answer for this particular question is option D, which is uh, what in part this particular scenario, what's happening is you are implementing loosely coupled uh, architecture by converting the monolithic application into microservices. That's your exam tip uh, that whenever you see in the question, monolithic application is being moved to AWS, uh, straight away, uh, look for an option which has implementation of loosely coupled uh, architecture. So final answer of this particular question is Answer D. That's it on this question. Let's move to the next question. Question number 74. A company has an AWS account 
the company wants to audit its password and access key rotation details for compliance purpose, which AWS service or tool will meet this requirement. Please go through this question. I hope you read the question. You mark the keywords. Try to find the answer from the given options. And we are in a new territory here. So let's use elimination technique. So let's go through each option one by one, eliminate uh, wrong options, and try to find the correct answer. So the first one is I'm um, access analyzer. This one focuses on access permissions for resources. So you can analyze AMP permissions, audit that, but this will not help you specifically audit password and access key rotations. We have done this service uh, in one of the previous episodes uh, where uh, you must have learned that uh, the use of the services for auditing WS resources, permissions, and accesses. But uh, incorrect answer for this particular question, so we rule that out. AWS Artifact, the next option, option B. This is a service that will give you compliance reports for various uh, regulatory and compliance requirements. If you have a compliance audit, you can use this service, log on, and try to get the reports you need for all types of compliance requirements. It is, however, not uh, specifically created for any password or access key rotation related audits. It doesn't track it. So that's wrong as well. So let's rule that out. Uh, I will skip the next option and I'll eliminate uh, option D according to me appears wrong as well. AWS Audit Manager, it's an auditing service. Uh, it's more for creating and managing custom audit frameworks rather than directly providing detailed report on credential obtention. This is a very specific question we have been asked that uh, what is needed to audit the password and access key rotation. So we need something very specific and that answer is option C, I am credential report. Uh, its purpose in life uh, is to provide detailed information about status of passwords and access keys within your AWS accounts. And that's the answer for this particular question. Answer is option C, I am credential report. I will take you to AWS documentation, which talks about this. So this, you can find this link uh, in video description and pause the video and probably uh, go through the, the write-up. So this is about how to get uh, credential reports for your AWS accounts. And when you read through it, you can understand uh, this gives you status of various credentials, including passwords, access keys, MFA device, et cetera, et cetera. So that's, that's the correct answer. So that's it on this particular question. Let's move to the next question. Question number 75, a company wants to receive notification when a specific AWS cost threshold is reached. Which AWS service or tools can the company use to meet this requirement? We need to select two options. Please read the question, go through available option and try to find which two uh, correct answers satisfy these requirement. Hope you have read the question and here is my version of markups. So there are two requirements here and this is again an SAA style, a mini SAA style question. So you need a notification and that notification needs to happen when a specific AWS cost threshold is reached that you have defined. Now you probably know the answer for this. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, but uh, we will use our elimination technique assuming someone who's probably not gone through any services uh, or just had a basic understanding of services will be able to answer as well. So first one to eliminate, uh, okay, let's go for option A, Amazon Simple Queue Service. Now this service can be used in a solution where you are sending notification, but this service itself will not send notification. This is uh, mainly used for decoupling your application where you have a particular service or a, a piece of uh, app application uh, trying to communicate with another application, maybe you know, writing to a queue or send sending some messages, but they are being stored in the queue. But then you need another service which actually does the job of sending messages. So this is incorrect answer. A fun fact around uh, Amazon SQS: this was the first service launched by AWS when AWS was launched in uh, back in November two thousand four. All right, but it's the wrong answer for this particular question. Let's move on. Uh, let's try to eliminate more uh, incorrect answers from here to so that we are left with a correct one. Okay, uh, Cost Explorer. We have done this service in previous questions. So what does Cost Explorer does is it gives you a tool that you can then analyze the cost uh, and the cost and usage of each of the resources that your AWS account is using. Obviously, you can then based on that take performance related uh, decisions, or optimize the usage of AWS accounts and services for you. But uh, this is not used to send any notification or uh, when a cost threshold is reached. This is kind of a post exercise, okay? So one, you do this on a weekly basis, you go through the reports. You can do this whenever you want, but assuming you're not going to sit on it uh, every day. Uh, every week you go log in, look at your cost explorer reports and that will give you trends and analysis, et cetera. But everything has happened, you won't know. Now you are probably doing the job of looking at where the, how much is the cost, how much is the usage, and then what do I do? But yeah, not tailor-made to go through others. 
uh, option number E, AWS cost and usage report. Now, this is another one where a, you can further analyze uh, cost on daily, monthly basis by resources. You can add tags to your resources and you can get a detailed breakdown by tags uh, and exactly understand where your AWS resource uh, usage is happening and cost is happening, but this doesn't trigger any automatic uh, notification, etc. You can use this once, you know, you whatever service we will get to now, uh, you found that a cost threshold has been breached and you got a notification, then you might use this service to understand what exactly uh, has been the usage pattern, etc. but not to trigger the notification. So this is wrong as well. So we rule out uh, option A, we already ruled out cost explorer, we ruled out as well, and now we are ruling out option E, AWS cost and usage report, and that leaves us with two options. Option B, AWS budgets, and option D, Amazon CloudWatch. Now, AWS budget, yes, this is a service made for defining cost thresholds. You can uh, use this service and configure a rule where you can say what is the budget uh, that you would like to have on your EC2 or storage or any other services. So this is a correct answer. Uh, and you that's not the only one. You need something to send messages, and that's where CloudWatch uh, alarms comes into picture. You can configure CloudWatch alarms to send you messages by combining it with AWS budget uh, configuration rules. So that's it. Uh, answer for this question is option B and option D, AWS budgets and Amazon CloudWatch. I will walk you through a reference documentation that will help you understand this even better. So here is a reference documentation from AWS which will help you understand how you can configure uh, rules uh, and billing alerts using AWS budgets and CloudWatch. Uh, you can see I have highlighted here in the red box uh, and you can see the mention of AWS CloudWatch billing alerts and uh, AWS budgets is being used to create the billing metric. You will find this link in the video description. You can go through it and understand it uh, in a better way. Introduced to some new services here. So let's uh, look at some reference documentation around it as well. AWS budgets, yeah, this is used for defining thresholds and you know pr planning the cost. And along with, as we have seen, uh, CloudWatch, you can trigger alarm and then you can notify users about a budget threshold being crossed. Very useful tool if you want to con control the cost of AWS usage that you are, uh, your resources are using. So that's AWS budget for you. Please go through this, uh, read the use cases, read how it works and high level uh, objectives. AWS cost and usage report, as we discussed, it can give you deeper analysis of how AWS resources are being used on your AWS accounts. You can apply tags and those can help you, you know, understand the cost allocation in much uh, uh, better way where you can, uh, you know, maybe put tags around department, like what is a technology department using? What is HR department using? What is accounting department using? So you can tag certain resources and then group those tags and see the usage around the tags. So that's your AWS cost and usage report. Then Amazon Simple Queue Service, uh, SQS. Uh, it was completely a misfit in this context. Uh, it's nothing to do with cost. Yeah, it could be used between applications where you want to decouple application, create distributed application. So in a larger context this can be used if needed but this is this is just for decoupling it's not going to help you and uh, create rules for the budget or help you send emails or messages when the rest threshold is received but it could uh, this could be a solution where a decoupling scenario is needed that's everything on this particular question and i believe that was the last question in this episode that brings us to the end of this episode i will see you in the next episode of the series soon if you like the content and want to get notified when I release the next episode of this series, then please subscribe to this channel. This is Exam Tricks and Tips. You're watching the AWS Cloud Practitioner series. See you in the next episode. Thank you for watching.